everybody. I'm BJ Flag. Happy New Year. Yeah, and I'm Rich G. Happy New Year to everybody. And this is episode 276, Top 4 Business Books You Should Be Reading. Yeah, BJ, I, I'm getting a lot of reading done over this holiday season. <laughs> All I'm doing is sitting by the wood stove with my feet up and reading lots of books. Let's let's just get chatting about the best books that you've read over the year. Because I think there's so many that came out this last year because of the pandemic and how everything went. So let's let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Anyway, uh, book number one is uh one of my favorite i've actually uh recommended this to about 10 of my clients uh it's called useful belief because it's better than positive thinking it's by chris helder and if you've had challenges with your business or career or just deciding to be positive will not fix them yeah. useful belief and strategy will uh, Chris shows you how to frame your challenges to make them surmountable and how to formulate an action plan for getting where you need to be. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff. He, he teaches you how to uh, a simple self-awareness strategy that turns problems into plans. And that's the biggest thing. Instead of focusing on the problem and trying to say, let's stay positive, he helps you change it into a plan. And once you start taking action, once you start being useful, it gets better. He helps you discover the truth about and the importance of being useful rather than positive. Uh, go beyond positivity to actually fix not only your professional problems, but your personal ones too. And it, he helps you uncover valuable lessons you've learned from the challenges you've overcome. You know, I think I think that last little bit, Rich, is pretty, pretty special on, uh, you know, uncovering the valuable lessons, because so many people will overlook all the trials they've had and don't feel they've learned from it. But they have. They totally have. And he's making you more aware. Right? Yeah, there are too many. There are too many books out there like positive thinking, positivity, positive. And I think yeah. it's it's like. Yeah, you can do the shift in your head, but Chris takes it to the next level of saying, no, no, the more useful you are in life, the more happy and positive you will be. Uh, yeah. Here's an excerpt. Uh, let me Ooh, let me I read like from the book. Uh, How often do people go into a meeting believing it will be a complete waste of time? By the way, that's me. <laughs> Mind you, it may not be a great meeting, but let's say you're required to attend. Once you know you have no choice about being there, ask yourself, what is the most useful position I could take in this meeting? This changes the entire approach to the meeting. Who knows? You might even get something out of it. The question to ask is, what is the most useful strategy to move me out of this moment and into a better place? What can I believe that will help me out here? Again, Ooh. he is changing. He's making you pivot every single time he brings up another point. He makes you pivot. It is so cool. That's a great book. So what's what's your book, BJ? My book is by Scott Galloway. It's called Adrift: America in a Hundred Charts. Now you guys all know I'm a graphic freak, as is Rich. That's a little unknown fact, but he sure is. And data is just, I'm crazy about data. So this, he is an amazing author, NYU um, business school professor. And he wants to come up with this. He's kind of saying, this is an urgent examination of the future of our nation and how we got there. Because I think he really believes that I bet this is going to be like an ongoing thing for him. Um, but he really believes that we are just at the beginning to reckon with our post pandemic future. So he doesn't think like that. He thinks this is like a, um, you know, an era. And he is saying that with all the political extremism, 
the great resignation affecting businesses and the supply chain issues, all those things. There's questions that have been left behind. You know, is our democracy under threat? How does big tech change our lives? What does job security really look like to the individual? So it's so amazing. He really feels America is on the brink of a massive change and the change that will disrupt the workings of our economy and drastically impact the financial backbone of our nation, the middle class. So I, I think everyone will enjoy that he goes all the way back to like 1945 to the present time. And he explains all these different things that happened so that people can really understand why we got to where we are today. And um, clearly it's all done through data. So when you're reading the bit of the brick, there's these incredible charts and incredible um, data that you really can get in there and understand. He really feels we're at a crossroads. And, you know, is this the time, you know, to take our nation, you know, what is it going to take to take our nation and, you know, put it into the new world? So it's kind of an exciting book for sure. Yeah, VJ, I love Scott Galloway. I listen to him <laughs> on his podcast every week and yep. he does lots of videos. He's just a... He's a very forceful presence and he has yeah. very specific opinions on things. And I'm not lying. I'm going to run out and get this book right after <laughs> we get off this podcast. This sounds like a great book. I love his books. I love his writing. Yeah. And he's just a great author. Yeah. And I just picked out like a little in excerpt so everybody could kind of get the gist of what was happening there. There's something powerful about the visual representation of data. It reached our instinctive ability to assess by sight versus the intellectual exercise of reading words and data. Data clarifies our conversations, helps us to see things clear. What the data tells me is not complicated. America is a work in progress, and it's made the most progress toward its ideals. It's become the most like itself when it has invested in the strong middle class. So he super supports our middle class, and he super supports what's happening um, in all areas of business. So very good read. I'm suggesting it. I'm I'm excited. Like I said, I'm going to run out and get it. So this awesome. is great. well, my book uh, is a book that we might have mentioned earlier this year. But if I had to go back and think of all the great books that you really should read if you own a business, this one's called Hook Point: How to Stand Out in a Three Second World, and it's by Brendan Kane, K A N E. Um, so much is being thrown at us daily in many forms. And they're all yelling at us, look at me, look at me. <laughs> How do you stand out in all that noise? How does your business stand out in all that noise? Well, Brendan breaks down the most effective strategies to generate new opportunities, innovate and skill your business, and create a compelling brand, both online and off, so you can thrive in this new micro attention world in which we live. And it absolutely is micro attention. I've used it on my website and content creation. And I have to be honest, over the past year, my Google analytics have skyrocketed. Um, every prospect that reaches out for my coaching says they found me online. And I could directly attribute it, A, to BJ, but B, <laughs> to just changing a little bit of my copy on my homepage and on my products page, because a number of clients have said, Rich, I love your site. It's so positive. It's so it's not there droning on about problems. It's actually talking about solutions. So, yeah, but I, I also feel that your website has clarity. That's the biggest thing. Like you Thank get you. right to the point. There's not this fishing around for the information. It's very clear. And this book, 
am I right? He really gets down to those strategies. And you, some books you'll read it and you just don't get that takeaway. Yeah. This book, you really get that. And um, it's, it's amazing because I think people are struggling with this. Because yeah, well, it, it, his whole thing is you need to solve the person's problem, but don't talk about the problem. Talk yeah. about the solution state that they'll be in if they use your product or service. Don't say like getting into car accidents frequently <laughs> or something like that. You actually talk about, you know, how safe and secure you are behind the wheel. You talk about the solution rather than the problem. Right. Do you have like an excerpt from the book that you could share? Absolutely. When developing a hook point for a company, product, or piece of content, I typically base it on what I feel the audience may want or need. My first thoughts are, how can I solve my audience's specific pain point or problem? And what is an outcome my audience has been seeking that they've yet to find. That's an outcome. Ooh, that is excellent. BJ, so what's our last book. book this week? The last book. The last book. And I don't think people are going to be surprised by this. It's called The Gift of Influence, Creating Life-Changing and Lasting Impact in Your Everyday Interactions. It's by Tony, I mean, Tommy Spaulding and you're going to love this read. It just came out in September and researchers um, estimate that an average person will influence up to 80,000 people over the course of their lifetime or 2.8 people a day. That's a stadium full of people. Each of us influences in ways of positive and negative, sometimes without even realizing it. You know, what What if we paid attention to that fact? What if we live differently? What if we lead differently? What if we put down our phones and just were more present with the people in front of us? What would that look like? Oh, this book is great. He explores how we can be more mindful and effective in wielding the influence that each of us have over others in our careers in our daily life and in relationships we cultivate throughout our lives. Um, Sherry, he shares a lot of stories. This is a very big storybook. And one of the most important ways of looking at it is the power of asking, asking the other person, What's their story? The secret of turning transactions into true interactions and then showing up meaningfully for people in need instead of just saying, well, let me see how I, you know, tell me when when I can be of help. That's just falls on deaf ears, but getting in there and doing something. Oh, it's a great book. Wow. That, I, <laughs> here I go again. This is another book I'm going to buy. I know, after. Really. I'm going to, it, because it, there's this line, what is it? It's not what you do for people. It's how you make them feel. That's what they remember. And how many times has it happened to you when you bump into somebody or someone reaches out to you and they say, I don't know if you remember, but like 15 years ago when you were managing me, you taught me something very powerful. And it was like, Oh. I don't even remember. I it just like yeah. over my head. So this, there was book, this yeah, yeah, it's a good one. And he brought up the story about a teacher who they were just about to go on spring break. All the kids in the fifth grade class were like, you know, just in in spring break mode. And she decided instead of teaching them the Pythagorean theorem, which was next up, she decided to give everybody a piece of paper, wrote everybody's name down in the class, and then said to them, write one little nice thing about them. Like, they're nice. They've got great hair. <clears throat> they helped me do this. And the kids feverishly wrote it all. She took all the sheets. On her spring break, she coordinated it so the person, like Eddie, would see all the things that people wrote, but didn't know who wrote it. 
And later, much later, um, it was a little sad. It was during the Vietnam era and one of the boys um, was killed. They all got together for the funeral. And during the reception, the father asked if she could come over, uh, come to his room for a minute. And he, there was his helmet on his bed and he picked it up and turned it over. And there was the letter wow. <laughs> that she had written. And slowly but surely, a couple of the other classmates came into the room and said, I have mine in my wedding album. I have mine in my front dress door. I've got mine in my wallet. And to think this teacher made that impact. That's how she influenced these people. It was so impactful. So the book wow. is full of that. Just preparing you. Oh, well, here we go. I, I'm getting all verklempt over here. There we go. <laughs> that's <laughs> Anyway, that's it for this week. You can reach out to me at newrenew.com and you can find Rich at richg.com. And thanks to our producer, Richard Scalzo. Have an unbelievable week and catch you later.